Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can take a look at the mental health and personality characteristics of Aaron Hernandez. Another question here is, what do I think of the Netflix series, Killer Inside, The Mind of Aaron Hernandez? So Aaron Hernandez was a convicted murderer who died in 2017 at the age of 27. Prior to his arrest for murder, he was best known as a tight end for the New England Patriots. Evidently in that role, he was exceptionally talented. He had achieved a high degree of fame and wealth. An important note here, Aaron Hernandez was a real person, of course. So just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. So the Netflix series was interesting. It was three episodes. It really spent a great deal of time speculating on possible causes in terms of what caused Aaron Hernandez to commit murder and what caused his eventual suicide. That really seems to be the theme of the series. Again, kind of looking at these causes, how could somebody so rich and powerful and famous and with so much to live for become a murderer? Overall, I really liked the series. I thought that it maybe emphasized a few of the angles a little too much, but I liked the recordings from jail, listening to those. I hadn't heard many of those before, so that was interesting. And then a lot of the interviews with different people that played a role in his life. I thought that added some value as well. So I'm first going to look at the timeline of the different crimes associated with Aaron Hernandez, and then take a look at the mental health and personality factors, and then offer my thoughts as to what happened in this situation. So Hernandez was born in 1989. His parents didn't get along too well. Evidently, they fought frequently. His father struggled with alcohol use, and both of his parents had criminal histories. Aaron's father died in 2006, and due to various relationship circumstances and other tension related to his mother, Aaron essentially moved out of his mother's house and moved in with an older cousin. In high school and college, Aaron, of course, was a successful football player, and in 2007, we see the first major crime. Now, I'm going to focus on the major crimes, but there were many smaller incidents that I'm not going to list. Many involve substances, aggression, and impulsivity. So again, in 2007, while in college at the University of Florida and playing football for the Florida Gators, we see that Aaron was excessively using cannabis and perhaps some other substances and was involved in an assault at a restaurant. He was only 17 but he was served alcohol. He refused to pay the bill. And after some tension between him and the manager, because of that, Aaron struck the manager on the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. The police were called. After the police arrived, the manager decided not to pursue charges. It's not really clear what happened here, but the manager alleges that he was offered money by lawyers working for the Florida Gators. Evidently, they denied that claim. Later that same year, we see that there was a double shooting that did not result in death. And in this situation, Hernandez was implicated. He was never charged with the crimes. And later we learned that it was unlikely that he actually committed the crimes. Now moving to 2012 and up to Massachusetts, we see there was a double homicide. But Aaron wasn't charged with that until 2014. So I'm going to review the Odin Lloyd murder first and then move to that double homicide. So looking at June 17, 2013, Odin Lloyd, who was one of Aaron's friends, was found dead from multiple gunshot wounds about a mile from Aaron's house. And again, this is Massachusetts. Eight days later, we see that Aaron was charged with first-degree murder and additional related charges. Two of Aaron's accomplices were charged as well. April 15, 2015, Aaron was convicted of first-degree murder and other charges. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now moving back to 2012, that double homicide, we see this occurs in Boston. Two men were shot to death while their car was stopped at a traffic light. The shooter was driving a silver Toyota 4Runner. Now looking at the investigation of the Odin Lloyd murder, we see that a 2006 Toyota 4Runner that was also silver was discovered as part of that investigation. It was leased by Aaron Hernandez. In addition to this, Aaron was also put at the scene by video recordings we see from a nearby bar. Now, he was charged in 2014 with these murders and other related charges. In 2017, he was acquitted of all the charges except for illegally 
possessing a firearm. But of course, he was still serving a life sentence for the Odin Lloyd murder. April 19, 2017, we see that Aaron Hernandez commits suicide in prison. This was five days after the acquittal of the double murder charges. He left three notes, one to Jose Baez, his attorney, one to his fiance, and one to his daughter. Now taking a look at the mental health and personality factors at work in this case. So I'll start with the personality factors first using the five factor model. I remember this through the acronym OCEAN, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. So with openness, this seems pretty low. With Aaron, we see extremely low conscientiousness. Extroversion is a little unusual. We see high extroversion, but he seems to be low on the positive emotions facet. Kind of goes back and forth on this one. We see low agreeableness generally. Clearly, if he committed a murder, that's usually associated with low agreeableness. But other times, he appears to be more mid-range on this trait. And in general, we see high neuroticism. So when looking at Aaron's behavior and trying to align it with mental disorder symptom criteria. The difficulty, of course, would be that post-mortem, it was discovered that he had chronic traumatic encephalopathy, otherwise known as CTE. So this puts an interesting spin in terms of considering personality disorders. Now, other than cannabis use disorder, which seems fairly clear based on reports, the main mental disorder that people think of when they think of the Aaron Hernandez case is antisocial personality disorder. We see this disorder has seven symptom criteria. So let's compare these criteria to Aaron's behavior. Looking at the first one, repeated unlawful behaviors. This one seems fairly clear. The second one, consistent deceitfulness. This one isn't as clear as the first and as clear as some of the others, but I would say yes to this one. The third criterion, impulsivity, poor planning. This one seems fairly clear. The fourth one, aggressiveness and frequently being involved in physical fights. Again, this one seems fairly evident. The fifth one, a reckless disregard for safety. This one appears endorsed. The sixth one, consistent irresponsibility, also seems endorsed. And the last one, the seventh, a lack of remorse. And this one appears endorsed as well. So looking at this, it may seem fairly clear because all seven symptom criteria appear to be met. But this disorder has three other criteria. You have to be over the age of 18, which he was at the time of the murder of Odin Lloyd. Evidence of conduct disorder needs to be present before the age of 15. This one's not completely clear, but I think one could make a good argument that he did have conduct disorder symptoms prior to age 15. And the behavior does not occur exclusively during the course of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Now, we can't necessarily rule those disorders out completely, but it doesn't appear that he had either of those disorders. So as we can see, other than the questions around conduct disorder symptoms before the age of 15, his behavior aligns with antisocial personality disorder. Now, this would be the case whether or not he had CTE. And I know this can be a little bit confusing. People have looked at this case and said, no, if he has CTE, that explains everything, and there is no antisocial personality disorder. However, the disorder can still be diagnosed even if CTE explains the symptoms. According to the definition of the disorder, again, the only disorders that would confuse things a bit would be schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. So that leads us to the next question. Does CTE explain the symptoms? If Aaron did have antisocial personality disorder, did he have it because of CTE? So again, after his death, we learn that he has CTE and actually an advanced case of CTE which is a bit surprising because he was only 27. Now, CTE is associated with a number of symptoms, aggression, irritability, and impulsivity, for example. So we see some alignment here between CTE and some antisocial personality disorder symptoms. CTE also has other symptoms that align with his behavior, like confusion, depression, memory loss, paranoia, and heightened suicidality. So does that explain everything? Did CTE actually cause all the problems? Did it lead to his behavior, including the murder? Well, this is a tempting explanation, and it comes up in the Netflix series a few times. Aaron Hernandez was wealthy, powerful, famous. He seemingly had no motive for the murder of Odin Lloyd. He seemed to be erratic. Does the CTE diagnosis bring order to all this chaos? Well, here's the problem with that theory. 
Yes, CTE explains some of the antisocial personality disorder symptoms, and it explains some of the other symptoms that were reported, and it may have played some sort of causal role, but it doesn't explain everything. Actually, a few things that happened, critical elements, aren't explained by CTE. CTE doesn't explain elements like criminal behavior, deceitfulness, reckless disregard for safety, consistent irresponsibility, and the lack of remorse. So key criteria for antisocial personality disorder that aren't explained by CTE. Looking at this in more detail, we see the premeditated nature of the Odin Lloyd murder. Both CTE and antisocial personality disorder would explain impulsivity, but premeditation is better explained by psychopathy, and more specifically, factor two psychopathy, sometimes called sociopathy, which of course has a strong relationship with antisocial personality disorder. CTE has no association with premeditated crime. Furthermore, we see at the end of the Odin Lloyd trial, the prosecution plays a video from Aaron's own home security recordings, which he failed to delete. Here we see Aaron hanging out with his two criminal accomplices who helped him commit the murder. They're both there with his daughter. Everybody seems calm. They're hanging out and having fun, relaxing, just hours after murdering a man. That behavior has nothing to do with CTE. This has a much stronger association with psychopathy. We see callous and unemotional behavior and a lack of empathy. I think that the CTE could have certainly contributed to his behavior. We don't know how much, and it's unlikely now that we'll ever know how much. But the real question would be, would he have committed the crimes if he did not have CTE? So that really speaks to one of the central concerns here. And again, we just don't know. Now, there are other contributing factors potentially to his behavior, and many of these were mentioned in the Netflix series. I'll take a look at these. We see this one theory that his sexual orientation may have played a part. Specifically, he may have been under stress because he could not express himself in the environment created by the NFL. Certainly, this could have been stressful, but it seems extremely unlikely that it would lead to murder. Now, we see the loss of his father. This, too, could have caused stress, but it doesn't really explain too much of his behavior. Then we see this theory about his cannabis use. This could have explained some of his behavior, certainly. It could also be that depressive symptoms led to the substance use. Even still, it's unlikely it would lead to murder. Then we see this theory about him hanging out with the wrong crowd, and I believe it is important not to underestimate the impact of this. I think this could have played a large role. This could have mixed with psychopathy to create a more dangerous behavioral profile. So with all these various theories and the confusion created by the CTE diagnosis, what's the most likely explanation? Well, the only thing anybody can really do here, of course, is speculate, as I mentioned before. So here's one theory. Due to a variety of stressors, including growing up in a high-conflict household, losing his father at a young age, hanging out with a dangerous crowd, and being the victim of an assault, Aaron developed antisocial personality traits and failed to mature, so he had immaturity. And these traits were allowed to fully express themselves because of his career in football, which started at a young age and no doubt led to the CTE. Now, this only made his behavior worse. This career afforded him power, status, money, access to weapons, access to substances, and freedom from responsibility. In terms of that last item, what really stands out for me is the fact that he got away with the assault in 2007 of that restaurant manager. That was disastrous. If he was arrested and convicted at that point, I believe it could have prevented a lot of the harm that occurred after that. In a sense, perhaps the story of Aaron Hernandez is a story of the perfect storm. Too much stress, too much damage to the brain, he was too young, too impulsive, and given too much power. So that's one theory of his criminal behavior, but what about him taking his own life? Different factors that I've talked about here have been used to explain that as well. This was also touched on in the Netflix series. I think that most of the time, it's really depression that's the biggest risk factor for suicide. He did seem to have depression. It may have been caused by the CTE, or it may not have been. Again, it's hard to know. He left three notes, as I mentioned, so impulsivity doesn't seem to be a large factor here, right? So when impulsivity is kind of taken off the table, that leads us back over to depression in terms of how we think about causation. So all these other factors really seem interesting, but they don't explain the behavior as well as depression would. So where does that leave us in terms of the CTE? 
even if CTE did not contribute in a major way to his behavior, and again, we don't know for sure, it was certainly alarming to see someone who is 27 years old have advanced CTE. And I worry that with all the money and power at stake with football, it really makes it easy for somebody to discount the dangers of this disorder. We hear a lot of these stories about how football is safer than ever. I suppose technically it's safer than it ever has been, but that doesn't mean it's safe. Somebody can light a stick of dynamite with a one-foot fuse and then realize how dangerous it is, so they extinguish that fuse and put in a two-foot fuse, right? Is the dynamite safer than ever? I suppose it's safer than it ever has been before, but it's still not safe. When looking at football, the underlying physics of people running into each other at high speeds really cannot be sidestepped, right? There's a real problem there in terms of preventing CTE. I don't know what the answer is in terms of CTE, what the solution is, but the case of Aaron Hernandez did open up a wider dialogue about this topic. So those are my thoughts about the Aaron Hernandez case and a little bit about the Netflix series about him. I know whenever I talk about topics like this, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.